Hello. Um, a few years ago, Prince Charles got into trouble for claiming that um, Mr. Putin's invasion of the Crimea was very similar to the sort of thing Hitler might have done. Uh, of course, he's quite right. And um, Mr. Putin has proven that he is disastrously irrational, that he is clearly borderline psychotic, uh, and that he's in the middle of a late life crisis brought on maybe by too much Botox. He is playing a no-win scenario with, what, six T-20 tanks and one um, strategic plane. He's got 12 prototypes, none of them working. This is a poker player who has been forced to play his hand. Now, we might think that's a good thing. I, I really do not think it is. Um, we can see, uh, well, the world is cascading into chaos. And um, Mr. Putin is commanding an army that is demonstrably ineffective and disorganized, and historically so. Uh, you can go back and you can look at all those Russian campaigns, all those campaigns uh, that Russia launched. Initially, every single one was a disaster. Um, 1905, the Japanese War, 1914, um, the Chechen campaign, an absolute disaster. The campaign against Charles II going all the way back, the Finnish expedition, the Second World War. Um, the Second World War was uh, chaotic until the sheer force of manpower, those serious numbers, the sheer bloody numbers kicked in. Um, this, um, this is actually paralleled um, by the career-defining moment uh, in Turkey of Kemal Mustafa Ataturk uh, during the Gallipoli campaign. He only uh, had success because of the numbers. Um, I, do, I do not expect you to win, I expect you to die, was what he said. And he threw more and more people into the trenches in Gallipoli. This is the sort of thing, I'm afraid, um, that Putin imagines he can do. It's the only way he can win. Putin has numbers. It's his only advantage. Now, there are four options. Um, number one, Putin changes his mind. Number two, China steps in and stops taking Russian oil. But China would demand a high price, possibly Taiwan. That's unacceptable. Number three, the Ukraine gives Russia a bloody nose. That actually seems to me to be the best and only option. Number four is the unspeakable if Putin thinks there is nothing to lose. But, I, you know, do remember Putin has two, maybe three daughters, uh, and however mad he may appear, he must think a little about the future. As for number three, well, Putin today at three o'clock in the morning uh, made the arming of the Ukraine, even modestly, uh, and the edging towards the Ukraine by NATO forces, even modestly, he made this a reason for war. So I think there is nothing to stop us from arming, um, uh, from arming the Ukraine and giving the Ukraine every help we possibly can. Uh, President Zelensky is probably the best thing that the Ukraine has ever had and could ever have. He's, uh, he's a stupendous leader. We can contrast him with our own miserable excuse for leadership. Um, Mr. Chur uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson thinks of himself as a Churchillian figure, uh, but he's a, he's, a, he's a poodle in a wig. Think of this morning. This morning, Putin was on television at 3 a.m. Only now, at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, is Johnson sitting at a Cobra meeting. He should, have been, he should have been at that meeting. He should have convened that meeting and had all, the, all his cronies like Liz Truss at that meeting at 5 o'clock. Churchillian? This isn't Churchillian. Uh, this is <laughs> this, this, this is this is student politics. This is nonsense, um, and uh, we actually need better leadership in this country. Uh, and it's that it's that observation that the West has a paucity of good leaders, which has given Putin the opportunity to go into the Ukraine. Uh, I'm afraid I've been saying this for a long time. Uh, we in the UK fielded Liz Truss, uh, that um, pathetic excuse uh, for a geography teacher. 
Um, you know, how on earth can somebody go in front of a, a, an experienced diplomat like uh, Sergei Lavrov and not know um, her own, uh, the country's geography, not know Russian geography, and then Rostov on Don, the, uh, the town that she didn't seem to know, the city, I think, that she didn't seem to know, became uh, one of the main focuses of this campaign. This is pathetic, uh, and we should be hanging our head in shame that we have promoted uh, this, um, uh, this nonsense into power. And she's not the only one. Rab um, is, is, our, is our deputy prime minister. He's the one who couldn't get off the beach in Crete when we were evacuating people from Afghanistan. The, the, you know, you can just go on and on and on. Posturing and um, stamping the foot is the activity of a petulant six-year-old. And we've got all of those in power in our government at the moment. And it's nothing to do with whether one endorses um, the right or the left, whether one supports the Conservatives or the Labour Party. One looks at the people on the ground and one sighs and one despairs at the nonsense which is fielded. That is British politics. And it's a mess at the moment. And that is why Putin um, thinks he had an opportunity. He then looks across to America and he sees a president who is floundering and again posturing like a six-year-old stamping his foot. It's simply, it's simply not acceptable. Um, Miss, M Monsieur Macron is more interested in his re-election and um, the German Chancellor has barely got his feet under the table. This is, by all accounts, an opportunity and Putin has seized it. Whether he intended to go to war, I think he didn't. I think he's been forced into that situation by the incompetence of the West. Um, but he is, he is a, you know, um, a, a sadly deranged leader. And there are plenty of people in Russia um, who would be prepared to call him out, but not at the moment. Because there is no, there is no opposition in Russia and there's no credible force in the West. We need to seize the initiative. We need to support Zelensky. We need to give arms to the Ukraine because we, I'm, I'm afraid, our back is against the wall now. Um, Putin has played his ace card and we have no choice but to respond and to respond quickly. And sanctions, I'm afraid, uh, can only be a very small part of the process because Mr. Putin has already factored the sanctions in, as Mr. Lavrov said, as Mr. Lavrov said um, the West was going to apply sanctions, whatever happened. And that would have been his advice to Mr. Putin.